الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أناديه ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أعصيه ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازيه نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما نؤمن له بالربوبية ونقر له بالعبودية من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والأوصياء والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين والصفوة المنتجبة من أصحابه الميامين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا أيها الناس قد جاءكم الحق من ربكم فمن اهتدى فإنما يهتدي لنفسه ومن ضل فإنما يضل عليها وما أنا عليكم بوكيل صدق الله العلي العظيم Many jurists, fuqaha, and scholars believe that the Sharia, the Islamic Sharia, the Islamic law, has five main objectives and goals. One of these five goals of Sharia is the freedom of religion, which has been embedded in the Holy Quran and also the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Imams. And freedom of religion means it has two branches. One is the freedom of belief. And beside the freedom of belief, it has a freedom of worship. So you are free in choosing your own belief, choosing your own ideological, theological system or a creed. And second, you have the freedom to practice that type of creed or faith or whatever you want to call it. And we see in the Holy Quran there are strong indications to reaffirm this meaning, to reaffirm the freedom of religion. One of the verses in the Quran, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ قَدْ جَاءَكُمُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ This is in Surah Yunus. Allah says to the prophets, tell the people, nas, all the people, believers and non-believers, the truth has came from your Lord to you. قَدْ جَاءَكُمُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَمَنْ اِحْتَدَى فَإِنَّمَا يَهْتَدِي لِنَفْسِهِ The one who is guided, he is being guided to his own benefit. يَهْتَدِي لِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ ضَلْ And the one who does not want to be guided. فَإِنَّمَا يَضِلُّ عَلَيْهَا Again, he's, he's becoming misguided to the harm of his own self. يَضِلُّ عَلَيْهَا Against himself. وَمَا أَنَا عَلَيْكُمْ بِوَكِيلٍ I am not wakil upon you. What is wakil here in this context? Wakil means I am not set upon you to, 
to dictate to you or to arrange your life for you. Allah did not put me here as a controller so I can control your life or dictate to you what to do or what not to do. I'm a messenger of God. I tell you what is good and what is bad and I leave the choice for you. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُصَيْطِرْ Your job is to remind, ذكر, to remind them, to stimulate their brain, to encourage them to believe in God, give them encouragement, inspiration, but you are not a controller. لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُصَيْطِرْ In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنْ أَعْرَضُوا And this is in Surah Tashura, chapter 42. If they reject you, if they turn away from you. فَإِنْ أَعْرَضُوا إعراض, When you turn your face to the other direction. When they reject you and turn away from you. فَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ عَلَيْهِمْ حَفِيظًا We sent you not as caretaker or, or a guard or a keeper, حفيظ. Your job is not a keeper or a gatekeeper or a guard upon them. If they want, this is their, this is their freedom. This is their choice. In alayka illa al Indeed, your job is balagh to convey the message. To convey the message. You are not a controller. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, faith is the matter of the heart. And it should be left free for us. It should be left without coercion, without using force. You cannot force your heart to love something or to dislike something else. This is the matter of the heart. The heart has to have conviction first and understanding. Once the heart loves something, has the conviction that this is good for me, he will do it, he will follow it. Your job is to inspire, to guide, to teach, to encourage. This is your job. But you are not a police. You should not use force against people. Tell them what is good and what is bad. Today we see in societies, in some Muslim societies, where religion is being politically manipulated, when religion is being dominated by the government, and when religion is being enforced, enforced upon people by force, by penalties, by punishment, these societies, people would not become true relig religious truly religious because they don't have a freedom of choice <coughs> in some countries that when you have to pray and you have no other choice then that prayers loses its value because that prayers is being enforced upon you this is not a matter of choice this is not your choice <coughs> now it becomes something as like a political duty. You have to pray, you have no choice. The hijab is the same. People are going to run away from hijab. And we see that with our own eyes. We don't have to read it in the books. You see it. You see it all, all over. Go to countries where hijab is not enforced by the government. You see women, they like the hijab. And their hijab is much better than countries where hijab is being enforced. See it. Go to the Middle East and you will see that yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yes, tell the people what is good and what is bad. Well, takun minkum, in a Muslim society, in a Muslim country, we need amr bil ma'roof and nahi anil munkar. Definitely we need that. Well, takun minkum ummatun yad'una ila al khair wa ya'muruna bil ma'roof wa yanhawna anil munkar. Let it be among you a group of people, scholars, leaders, activists, 
who call people to practice goodness. And one of the goodness is the hijab. One of the goodness is the prayers. One of the goodness is the Islamic iffa, chastity and dignity. Staying away from alcohol, staying away from corruption. But then invite them. Innama anta mudhakkir, a reminder, conveyor. You convey the message. You cannot force them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, قَدْ تَبَيَّنَ الرُّشْدُ مِنَ الْغَيْرِ فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوَثْقَى Before that he says, لَا إِكْرَاهَ فِي الدِّينِ قَدْ تَبَيَّنَ الرُّشْدُ مِنَ الْغَيْرِ Do not use coercion. Ikrah means coercion. You're forcing your son to pray. You tell him you are left with no choice. If you don't pray, you deprive, you, you, you starve to death. I don't give you money. I don't give you shelter. No food. What sort of prayers is this? This prayer has no meaning. The prayers and the worshipping and the ibadah becomes meaningful when you have a choice. When you have a choice. And when you understand the value of the prayers. We have to teach our children the value of the prayers. That what happens if you don't pray? You have to tell him. You have to tell him what is the difference between someone who establishes the prayers and respect the prayers and the prayers for him or her is a priority and someone who is careless about the prayers. We have to tell them the difference. And we have to let them cho choose. They have. It's a matter of choice. It's a matter of faith. Allah says, leave faith away from dominance. Give a freedom, not only freedom to Muslims, give a freedom to non-Muslims. They want to worship the way they want. I always say to our Christian friends, I read this verse for them, how God protects synagogues. How God protects churches and temples, places of worship. They are protected under the Islamic law. In an Islamic society, in an Islamic community, a place of worship, worship that belongs to others is protected. It has immunity. It should be safeguarded, protected against any aggression. Today a mosque in Houston, Texas went in a flame was destroyed, Masjid Quba, in Texas, in Houston. Few hours before that, a Shia Masjid in Peshawar was attacked, and 20 people were killed during Friday prayers. So it happens in non-Muslim, some non-Muslim crazy people who attack the Muslim worshippers and some Muslim crazy people in some Muslim countries, some Muslim radicals, and, and, and violent extremists in the name of Islam, in the name of Quran, they kill the worshippers on a Friday, during Friday prayers. 20 people were killed, 40 were wounded today in Peshawar. And last week the same, again in Pakistan. Another attack on a Shia mosque by Taliban. Sometimes here the Muslims, they care, they, they call for the protection of the Muslim community in America, but they don't call for the protection of the Muslims in Pakistan, in Afghanistan. This is double standard. Whether the attack happens on a mosque in America or outside America, it's a crime. Whether an attack happens on a church in America or outside America, it's a crime again. It's a crime. Allah says, ولولا دفع الله الناس بعضهم ببعض لهدمت صوامع وبيع وصلوات ومساجد يذكر في اسم الله كثير. A church has a protection in Islam. The same way you protect your mosque, if you see an attack happening on a church, you have to defend the church. You have to defend the synagogue. You have a duty, religious duty. These are places of worship, even if we do not agree with them. 
even if we do not agree with their ideology, with their religion, but because they adopted this place as their church, their synagogue, it is a protected in Islam. People of book, during the Muslim times, even after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there were many places of worship that belonged to non-Muslims, Christians, and Jews in Medina, in Iraq, in Syria, in other places, in Yemen. And they had freedom of religion. They had freedom of religion. At a time in Medina, when the Prophet ﷺ was the leader, there were three communities. There were Muslims, there were Jews, and there were Christians. The same thing in other cities. They lived side by side. Allah guarantees for them the freedom of worship. Guarantees that for the non-Muslims and also for the Muslims, he, had, he tells them, you have, you have the freedom of choice. Choose your religion. Do not be coerced. Do not be misled. Choose your religion. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ We gave you life and brain and reason and the ability to distinguish between good and bad, now we want you to make the choice. Look at your children here in America, where there is no coercion, you don't force them to pray, you teach them, look at how religious they become, genuinely religious. But go to other places, people are not religious. People pray because they have to pray. In some countries, if you don't pray, you lose your job. What's the value of these prayers? The prayers that is made for dollars, not for Allah, is worthless. Does not bear fruit. Does not have any fruit. And because of these such type of prayers, we have wars today in Muslim countries. People are fighting each other. Because they did not honor the value of their prayers. Their prayers became mechanical, not spiritual does not touch their hearts. It touches only their limbs, not their hearts. The forehead, when it goes on, on the ground, this is a physical gesture, not spiritual. While the sujood, it must be spiritual. If we understand, if we only understand the value of sujood, the meaning of sujood, the meaning of submission to Allah, we submit our entire entity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We go back to him. We tell him, you are the leader. I put my head on the ground for no one except you. For no one. This is the highest spiritual and ethical meaning that we have in our prayers. Other religions, they kneel down. But we do something further for Allah. Allah deserves more than kneeling down. Yeah, you do sujood for Allah. Complete surrenderance. Complete submission to him. If only we know the meaning of that, it will change our life. The problem it is not changing the life of the Muslims. And in some countries, they, they are worse because they don't understand the meaning of their prayers. Because their parents, they taught them, and sometimes their mashayikh now, in some of these radical communities, they force them to be religious. They did not have the choice, freedom of choice to choose their religion. They were forced, they were misled, their prayers became meaningless for them, rather than becoming meaningful. After the prayers, immediately they resort to bombing, to shelling. We have Brother Ammar al-Khidr here. He's not here. He came last night from Syria. Yesterday, he lost his, his, his first cousin in the shelling of those radicals and extremists of his town in Syria. His young cousin died, was killed in Syria yesterday because of the shelling of those, indiscriminate shelling of those so-called Muslims who want to establish the Islamic Khilafah, the Islamic rule, who want to implement the Quran. And then they wreak havoc. They kill women, children, infants, 
they destroy the entire country in the name of Islam. Because they did not teach them the freedom of choice. They were forced from their childhood. Don't think that extremism is the product of one night or two nights. No. No, no, no. It begins when they are children. They had no choice. They were very strict with them. This is haram, don't do this. Haram, 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 haram. Day and night, this is haram. Hmm? This is haram, but murdering innocent people is halal. When it comes to murder, it's halal. It's wajib. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوصيائه وأهل بيته وأحبته علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيد شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهما السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تقتل النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ومن قتل مظلوما فقد جعلنا لوليه سلطانا فلا يسرف في القتل إنه كان منصورا صدق الله العلي العظيم The Muslim community in America and worldwide was shocked two days ago by the senseless and a tragic murder of a three bright, innocent, young Muslims in North Carolina. We share the pain with their parents, with their family members. One of their relatives is our dear brother here in Orange County, brother Yasser Barakat, who flew two days ago. Once he heard the news and I was talking to him on the phone, he went for the funeral. He's a good friend of us from the Syrian community. Those three, Dhiya Barakat and his wife Yusur Abu Salha and her sister Razan Abu Salha, they had a very promising future. They were activists working and serving several charities, serving the homeless, serving the refugees, and they intended to go to Turkey to serve the Syrian refugees. We really lost them. It's a big loss, not only for their families and their community, but for all the Muslims worldwide, and as I said last night, they are considered shaheed, inshallah, and martyrs, because they were the seekers of knowledge, tullabul ilm, and Allah says the one who, on his way to receive knowledge, dies, he will get the reward, the thawab of the shaheed, inshallah ta'ala. 
and also we we mourn a non-muslim lady from arizona kyla miller who was also murdered in in syria by isis her family lost her also she dedicated her life she was very young she decided to travel to syria though she was forewarned by her family and her friends not to go because of the dangerous situation there but she decided to go ahead so she can provide something for the refugees for those who have been affected by the war there and she ultimately lost her life we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow his mercy on her and patience and forbearance on her family also we give condolences to the family of al khadr especially to our brother ammar and his brother muhammad for losing their cousin yesterday again in a terrorist acts in syria when they were shelling their city busra sham and their cousin died their cousin is yunus haider al khadr also we mourn the tragic loss of the worshippers to today in the mosque in Peshawar in Pakistan when they were participating in Salatul Jumu'ah ah Friday prayers and then Taliban claims the responsibility someone goes inside the masjid pretending to be one of the worshippers and then he detonate himself he kills himself and he kills almost 20 people and he wounded more than 40 of them 40 worshipers on a day of peace the day of a friday the day of togetherness the day of unity the day where we a day of reflection where we need to get together and reflect on our life it becomes a day of mayhem and a tragedy and bloodshed unfortunately what we learn we learn a lot from these tragedies that is happening nowadays we learn a lot what is the solution how can we stop that those three young people who were studying to be leaders in their communities and servants who serve islam and they serve america and serve the humanity how can we stop that it all goes down to something called ignorance whether those who are killed in america by a non-muslim terrorist or those who are killed in pakistan and syria and afghanistan and iraq and yemen and egypt and elsewhere you name it the victims who are killed on a daily basis on a daily basis again because of ignorance because of a culture called hate cultures hate how can a person goes inside a masjid and he knows there are innocent worshippers among them children among them women among them elderly and then he kills now i understand when there is a battlefield people are in combat but when someone who is in the masjid or a hospital or a school or a marketplace how can something go there someone goes there and then he kills this is because of the culture of hate culture of prejudice culture of misunderstanding and ignorance allah says when people do not use their hearts meaning their brains we have given them brains they don't use their brains neither they see with their eyes they chose not to hear with their ears this is the result the result is bigotry racism ignorance intolerance hate we have to change this allah says i want i sent you to this earth to recognize each other to respect each other not to use violence we have given you a powerful tool called the brain aql. why don't you use your aql? Why do you have to use bullets and guns? You have aql, you have logic, you have reason. 
try to dialogue, to speak with each other. And one of the solutions in America for our crisis, and I am telling you, you heard in the news today what happened to this mosque in Houston, which is still in flames. It could happen to our mosque. Don't be shocked or surprised if you hear a mosque here in Orange County is under attack. Don't, don't, don't be shocked. But not now. Oh, don't worry. No. Don't run away. Let me finish my prayers. Yeah. How do we combat that? How do we counter it? I believe what is happening now, the fighting among the Muslims, especially what ISIS is doing in Syria and Iraq, the kidnapping, the killing, and also movies like The American Sniper, and articles, and some, some policy makers, lawmakers, in his interview when he inflames Islamophobia, he inflames anti-Islamic um, anti sentiment, or a filmmaker, or a journalist. This is the result. We see the result in a burned mosque, in an attack on young people who are sitting in their apartments. In their apartments, they hurt no one. In their heart, they have love for others, and someone comes and breaks in, and he kills them. Execution style. We have to counter this, a bad movie with a good movie. I know what happens when things like this happen, we say, inna lillahi wa inna lihi rajun. We pray, we weep, but this is not enough. Allah says, do something. I am with you. Innani ma'akuma asma'u wa ara. You have to do something. Muslims are not doing enough to protect themselves here in America. We do not have enough civic, civic engagements. We, we the Muslims, be it Iraqi, Lebanese, Syrian, Egyptian, Pakistani, Afghani, whatever. We are busy with our weddings. Huh? We have weddings here. We have celebration here. We have birthday party here. You know, we don't know what's happening in America. We don't have time even to listen to the news. We don't have time to contact the editor and tell him what you wrote is wrong. This is not Islam. We don't have time to call the CNN and tell them, listen, you have to, you have to report on this incident. We don't have time for that. All what we care about, the income, to take care about my children, to have a house, and to go about my own entertainment. We are not part of the American society. How can we protect Islam in America? We are aliens, truly we are aliens, coming from another planet. We have to be engaged. Sometimes I see some functions taking place by some Islamic organizations, like MPAC and others, and when you go, only two or three people of the community are there. The rest are absent, as if this is not their land, as if this is not their future. We have to be engaged. This is the way to protect Islam. Through enlightenment, through education, through reaching out to churches and people here and telling them what you see in, in, by ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, Taliban, this is not the true Islam. The true Islam is different. The true Islam is based on compassion, forgiveness, love, togetherness. We have to present Islam to them. We have a long journey, I am telling you. When this incident took place in Chapel Hill, some parents, they, they said, we are not going to send our kids to schools. Is this a solution? You don't send your son, your daughter to the school for how long? Two weeks, three weeks, three months? And then after that, do you pack and go back to the Middle East? This is your land. This is not the solution. The solution is to be engaged, to bear the responsibility. Each one of us has a responsibility. And we can do according to our istita'a ability. Some of you are good at public speaking. Some of you are good at writing. Some of you are good at making money, alhamdulillah, I can see. So those who make money, they give to those who are activists. Let's help with our brain, with our logic, with our money, with our time, with our self to protect Islam. Allah brought us to this country for a reason, for a reason.
Allah wants you to defend Islam in America, here. He does not want us to carry a gun and go and fight in Syria. He says, this is your jihad. Your jihad is to enlighten people about Islam, to tell them about the true Islam. This is your jihad here. And he wants us to work. Inshallah, we live up to this responsibility. Inshallah ta'ala. Allahumma khfir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat tabi'i allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat innaka mujibu al-da'awat innaka ghafir al-khati'at Allahumma wahid kalimata al-muslimin ala al-khayri wal-birri wal-salah wal-taqwa ya arham al-rahimin wa'ajjil fi faraj qa'idina wa imamina sahib al-asri wal-zaman wa ila arwah al-shuhada and for the soul of those martyrs that I mentioned their names earlier and the shuhada and Ishawar Al-Fatiha Ma'as-Salati Ala Muhammad Wa Ali Muhammad